it's going to be what is known as a maze solving uh, robot. And so, let me zoom this. Okay, so there are two parts to the to the project. Part one is to get this bot. It's called Lumi bot. This is something which we have used in the past for one of the homeworks to navigate this course. Okay, by following a wall. So you can either follow the wall on the left side using the left wall as a reference, or you can use the right wall as a reference. So uh, what I did was I put in there five sensors, so more sensors than you actually need. So you can see this red and the green and the red and uh, blue lines. Those are actually sensors. There are two on the left side, two on the right side, and one sensor, the green one facing forward. So what I suggest is you can use only two sensors. Use either the left two or the right two to follow the wall and use the green one only if you have to. Okay, uh, And I've actually given you hints on how to what you need to do in order to get the robot to follow the wall. Uh, essentially, you need to maintain a certain distance from the wall and so that you can use the distance measurement. But you also need to ensure that your car is oriented along the wall, right? It shouldn't be going away or towards the wall. And the way you can do this is by ensuring that the measurements from two sensors on one of the sides are reading almost the same value. So if they're not reading the same value, then you are actually uh, going to the left or right. Yeah, so I, I said it's it's not it's it's due next week or it's not actually due. So the due date is not uh, Monday, but you have the whole week to work on it. And what I found is when I did this is that, okay, so let me finish the second part. It's actually simpler than you think. Uh, so this is the wall following scene, get it to work here. Once you do that, you can then go to the maze and solve a maze. So here's an example maze where you can actually follow one of the walls and reach the, the black dot. Okay, the black dot is the goal. The pink dot is the start. And you can either follow the, the left wall or the right wall, and then you can reach this. This is known as a simple maze, which means that if you follow a wall, you will reach the target. You will not get, there are no loops in it, so you'll not be stuck, stuck in a loop. Now, the, the easy thing about this project is that what I did was I actually got it to follow the wall, and then I took the same code and I pasted it here, and it just worked. I, I did it for the to follow the left wall. I did follow the right wall, and it just worked. So it was uh, the only thing I needed to tune was I set up. Uh, I said that you need to do it in sixty seconds or less. So you might have to speed the robot up a little bit when you want to finish this course. But what I can tell you is that if you get it to work reliably in the first part, stage one, then this stage two is actually very very straightforward. In fact, it's a copy paste of that code. What I plan to do is when I actually grade you, I will actually change this terrain a little bit. So for example, I can easily change this terrain by taking this uh, wall and this wall and moving it to the left. So if I do that, then you know it still is a simply connected maze, but now you have to follow a different path. So I'm planning to do simple changes to this uh, maze so that you are, so you're tested on, on those things. So, are, so if you look at the grading, there are three parts, but four parts to it. You complete stage one, complete stage two, which is basically the courses I've given you in stage two, a new course will be simple modifications of the original um, stage two course, okay? I may not, you should be prepared for all three. I may not ask you to show me all three. In fact, most likely I will ask you to do number three, okay? And then if you don't do well in that, then I will ask you to show me stage two and stage one, but you can uh, sort of, I think that once you figure out stage one, stage two and stage two new course is actually pretty simple to do. And then finally, we'll, you have to submit things by email. Okay, I, I didn't get too much time to talk about this. Uh, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, I put some hints down. Maybe I need to give a little bit more explanation. Uh, what I think, and I actually solved the project three myself. I found that there are really two things you need to do in order to, to get the robot to follow a line. One is, uh, you want to ensure that the orientation of the robot is perfectly aligned with the wall. Okay, so one way of doing this is to, so in this case, assume that the robot is following the left wall, okay, and it measures the distances D1 and D2 from the proximity sensors. If you want the robot to be oriented perfectly with the wall, you want to ensure that D1 equals D2, right? And so in this case, you can see that um, D1 is greater than D2 which means that the robot is going away from the wall or it needs to steer to the left, 
right? And the way you can steer to the left, there are two ways. One is it can start spinning the, the right motor fast. So you'll start steering to the left or it can start spinning the left motor slightly slower than the right motor, in which case it will also steer to the left. So I think that's one thing you want to ensure that it always maintains an orientation parallel to the wall. The other thing which you want to do is you want to also ensure that the robot maintains a certain distance from the wall. So in this case, uh, you can see that the robot as is parallel to the wall. So the first part is working, but it's actually so close to the right wall that there's a fear that may actually bump into the wall. And that's why you need to ensure that the robot maintains a, a safe distance from the right wall. And, cons and one way to ensure that is to ensure that this D1 and D2 is a certain distance. So you could either set one of these, your, sorry, your objective could be is to set one of these sensor values, use one of the sensor values to get the robot to come closer, or you could use the average, it's up to you. I would say play with both of them and see what works best for you. Okay, so I think there's just two things you need to be able to do, and your programming is basically doing following this logic. Now, I, I, I sent in my original, uh, uh, upload, I had put this file called domibotwall.ttt and I realized that's probably not a best uh, course for the right falling robot. It was good for the left one. So I actually modified the, the course to be a symmetric one. So in this case, for the if you're following the left wall, you're essentially going to go around this. And if you're following the right wall, you'll be going around this, right? And what I also did, what I did was I actually set this orientation of the robot as it starts at an angle. And I did that only because you can actually start programming this robot by when it is oriented slightly to the right to get it to perfectly align. That should be probably be your starting point to, to figure out how to keep the robot parallel. And then you can start moving on how to keep the robot a fixed distance from the wall. Okay. so question, because the distance is not discrete, how do you equal them? Okay, so one of the, the I can't go back. Okay, so one of the, the concerns here is how do you really set D1 equals D2? So clearly D1 is few decimals, 0. 0.1241, something like that. And D2 is 0. 0.123, uh, okay? So it's off by 0. 0.001. Okay, so you are actually not trying to get them exactly right. You're, you're trying to get the approximate line. In fact, uh, your, your code should be able to, uh, one way of doing this is to actually round it up to say two, two decimal places and, and do it. I'm sure there is a, a function in Lua which you can call to do that. Uh, the other thing you want to remember is you don't really need to set it as D1 equal equal to D2. So then you will have too much uh, in sort of vibration motion it starts to go left, right, and goes unstable. So you might want to uh, sort of ensure that this distance is within a bound. So you could say D1 minus D2 should be between 0 0.002 and point, minus 0.002 and plus 0 0.002. It's actually not a, not a very good idea to actually equate things in, in uh, when you're programming because things are never equal to each other when you're doing these things in real life. So two things, you could round it, to the question which was posted over how, if distance are not discrete, how to use them. One is around the numbers. The second one is see that D1 minus T2 is a certain range, okay? Okay, and so then uh, the last part is the maze solver, which I said is, uh, this is actually a, a simple course, okay? And uh, by simple course, it means that if you follow the left or right wall, you should be able to go. Now, there is one caveat here. If you make this robot go straight, right? Some point, and you're following the left wall. So if you're following the right wall, there's no problem. You can just keep going and you'll turn and it'll be fine. If you're following the left wall, however, you will see at this point, you just cannot turn based solely on the left two sensor values. You should actually start thinking of using the forward sensor. So what I'm expecting you to do is take the previous wall miss solver sorry, the wall follower to build your code to get the robot to orient itself and to move parallel. And then here, if you're using the left following wall, you might have to also use the forward sensor, which is just one simple thing, which is you, you just ensure that if the distance, if that sensor is 
if, if it's pointing like this, the range is limited to 0.25. The moment it sees a wall, it means that you need to start turning uh, right or left. And you know you, you can do either way, but your other senses will take care of following the wall. So that's the additional thing you might want to do. In fact, I think if you're doing a right following wall, you also might need to uh, take, take care of using the forward sensor. If once you reach, let's see, Let's see if you go this way, this way, this way. Okay, so in this case, actually, you can, you can, you don't need to code the forward sensor if you're following. I warn you that I will actually change this course. I will change some part of the course. So uh, you can actually try to modify this code a little bit. One way of doing the modification, and if you want, is you can actually start this bot right here. So instead of starting it at the pink, you can set the black and then do the same right hand line following. So if you start over here and try to go there, then your bot will have to use the forward sensor when it reaches this. So test your code in both scenarios where you use the forward sensor and when you don't use the forward sensor because you might need that. And my uh, hunch is that your code, once you get it working on the wall following, it should be a very trivial modification to get it to work on the maze solver. You just have to take care of wall following and some isolated cases, how to use the forward sensor to actually turn, okay? Okay, so there'll be three things you need to worry about besides the things I wrote down there. One, one and two were the distance the, for the orientation and safe distance. The third one is using the forward sensor 